When you love someone who's depressed, it is so common for them to try to push you away. And it sucks. It hurts. All you want is to help them. And it's like, they don't even want you around because I know how painful this is because I was there for a long time with my husband. And there are four things that I have learned that have completely changed my relationship with him, especially when he's trying to push me away because of his depression. And I really think these four things are going to help you and save your sanity, just like they saved mine. So let's jump in and talk about the four things to keep in mind when the person you love is depressed and trying to push you away. The first thing is to understand why they're doing it, because it has nothing to do with you, right? The reason that they take that action, that they're pushing you away, that they're rejecting you is because they feel something. And that feeling is created by a thought in their head. Our thoughts are so often self-fulfilling prophecies because we believe something to be true. It creates a feeling in our body. And then the actions we take are like to kind of prove it true to ourselves. So let me give you some examples of what your partner might be thinking. So we know the action is to push you away. They could be doing that out of the thought, I'm not worthy of love. A depression often has a lot of self-loathing and self-hatred in it. So if they think I'm not worthy of love and they feel that self-loathing, from that self-loathing, they're going to push you away. What that does is prove to them that they're not worthy of love. Now you're not there. Maybe you're upset, you're hurt, you're angry. And they're like, you see, the brain gets, it's like, it doesn't feel good. It's like an irritated, angry good. It's like, well, I'm right. And it's terrible. And I suck and I'm not worthy of love. But at least I'm right about that, right? I've proven to myself that I'm not worthy of love. That's one thing that could be going on. There's so many other reasons they could push you away. Right? Some of the other thoughts, they could have a thought that you're trying to help them go to therapy or go on medication or do yoga. And they might have the thought this isn't helping and feel angry and push you away out of anger. They might also have be pushing you away out of sadness. Right? They might have the thought like, I'm dragging them down with me. Right? I'm dragging this person I love down into my depressive hole with me and feel really sad and push you away out of that sadness. And there are, we could go on and on and on. These are just a few examples. Another thing that is really common and a common reason that people push you away when they're depressed is because they feel nothing. This is something that was happening in my relationship a lot. They feel nothing. There is no there is no emotion there in this apathetic apathy place where nothing is good. Nothing is even bad. It just is nothing. And they can't connect. There is no human connection in that place. So their thought in that situation might be something like there's no point, right? There's no point to life. There's no point to any of this. They feel apathetic and they push you away because why I can't, I can't do anything. There's no I'm not getting anything from this. I can't offer anything to this person. Why would I even interact if there's no point? So that's something, if you need to know the reason, you can always talk to your partner, but I would talk to them about this when they're not going through a depressive episode. Something that's helped me in talking to my husband is he has said to me that when he's in that feeling nothing place, he's like, there's nothing you can do for me. And I would rather you be taking care of yourself and feeling happy. So that is a thought you're welcome to borrow when your partner pushes you away and they're depressed is maybe in that moment, the best thing you can do for them is take care of your own mental health. So let's move on to the second thing. Those are some reasons why they might be pushing you away. The second part is so important. This has nothing to do with you, right? I know I said this in reason in, in the first thing, but I'm going to say it again and make it his whole own thing. This has nothing to do with you. Their thoughts and feelings and the action of pushing you away is not about you, even if they say it is, right? Their thought might be like, they're not helping me. They're making this wor worse by trying to push me to go to therapy or something like that. Even if that's true, even if that's their thought, it has nothing to do for you. When somebody is depressed, they are fighting a life-threatening illness. That is what depression is, especially if your partner is suicidal or ever has suicidal thoughts, they are fighting for their lives. So brains, when they are fighting to survive, are not often rational. They are going to throw out lifelines in every direction, looking for some relief, for some hope, for something to save them from where they are. Some of those lifelines are going to be painful, cruel, mean things. That doesn't mean that they're true thoughts. When I say not true thoughts, they might be thoughts your partner has, right? You're not helping me, you're making it worse. They might have that thought and believe it in that moment. It doesn't make it objectively true. 
it is their brain looking for some kind of relief for some kind of answer. And you know that their thoughts when they're depressed are not objectively true or totally rational, right? They might want to die. They might see that there is no point and no hope. They might believe it's impossible for things to ever get better. You don't believe those thoughts just because they say them or think them, right? They believe them in that moment. You don't adopt those thoughts as your own. So don't adopt their thoughts about you. If they say they're pushing you away because of something you've done or you're making things harder for them, do not take that on and own it as your own, right? Understand that their brain is going through something incredibly frightening and traumatic right now, and they are trying every different explanation and resource to try to help themselves get out of that hole. So as much as you don't trust when they tell you that there's no hope and things will never get better, as much as you refuse to believe that, refuse to believe that they're pushing you away has anything to do with you because it does not. The third thing, and this one is so powerful, you can love them no matter what. It doesn't matter if they push you away. It doesn't matter if they don't want to see you. It doesn't matter if they break up with you or divorce you or leave you. You still get to enjoy loving them because love is not for them. The feeling of love, you feel it. That is a feeling you feel in your body created by your thoughts about that person. So for instance, if you're like, I don't know, Rachel, it's hard to love somebody when they're pushing me away and they're not even there. I have a very dear friend, somebody who was incredibly important to me growing up. And I think about her often, almost probably not every day, but every few days she comes to my mind and it always makes me feel like warm and tingly and loving. And I get so much pleasure out of remembering her and thinking about being with her. She died years ago, like six years ago, she's been dead. I still get to enjoy loving her, even though she's not alive anymore. Not only is she not in my presence and am I not with her, she's not even here anywhere on earth. And yet I get to experience the pleasure of feeling love for her because I create it with my thoughts, my memories of her. So it is possible to enjoy loving your partner and to feel connected to them, even when they're pushing you away. However, and this brings me to the fourth thing, you are gonna have a hard time doing that if you haven't done the work to love yourself first. If you haven't done that self-love work, you are going to take everything they say and do personally. It's really going to hurt because if your relationship with you is a little bit muddy or a little bit messy, like if you judge yourself, if you struggle with a lot of negative self-talk and an inner critic, if you are trying to get through anxiety or overwhelm and not succeeding at that, you are going to take their actions and their words personally, and you are going to feel a lot of pain in response to that. So the most important thing you can do is to cultivate self-love. That is the most important thing you can do when you love someone with depression, because it's going to give you the foundation, the strength, and the compassion to be with them and weather the storms with them. Because you guys, this is the real secret to loving somebody with depression without burning yourself out, overwhelming yourself, getting exhausted or frustrated or depressed yourself. The secret to helping them and supporting them is to cultivate a healthy relationship with yourself. Because if you are struggling with anxiety, frustration, resentment, shame, or guilt, you are not going to be able to be present with your partner. And that is what they need. Your job is not to fix them. It's not to help them. It is not to heal them. What they need from you is your presence, your unconditionally loving presence. Being able to love them and being courageous enough to be with them in their pain, to be with them in their suffering without trying to change or fix it, that is the single most powerful, amazing gift that you can give to somebody who's in pain. But if you don't give that gift to yourself first, if you don't learn how to be unconditionally loving and present with yourself and your own suffering, you're not going to be able to do that for somebody else. This is why I created the Relationship Foundation. It is a 12-week one-on-one coaching program where I will guide you through the process of learning to love yourself, of learning to be present, to be present with your pain, and through that process, to transform it into love and kindness and compassion for yourself. This work, the self-love work, will transform your relationship with a depressed partner. 
I know because I did it and it not only saved my marriage, but it saved my sanity. There are some links in the description below where you can learn more. I offer a free masterclass teaching a lot of the tools and techniques that I share with my clients in the Relationship Foundation. And you can also always book a free strategy call with me. I would love to talk to you, understand more about what you're going through, loving somebody with depression, and see if it's something I can help with. All right, guys, have a wonderful, beautiful day. And no, it's not about you. It's not your fault. You can get through this by loving yourself first and loving your partner from that unconditional self-love. You've got this. I'll talk to you soon.